Hello, this is Harker Devine, and today we are going to SCP-001, also known as Amani Ram. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into this. And as you can probably tell from the scroll bar here, this is a long, long SCP. We aren't going to be able to read it all in one video. So we're only going to so we're going to read it in parts that are going to be this first among many videos. How many? I don't know. At least three. More than that, and I can't really count. Sorry. Anyway. This SCP is level 4001 classified. I have a number. SCP-001. I guess this is containment class and it is pending. Special containment procedures. Full containment and procedures have not been analyzed due to the recent changes in the status of SCP-001. Detailed at the conclusion of this file with a tentative response plan. Foundation policy on cybernetic implants is currently frozen, pending council vote. Description. SCP-001 is an extra-dimensional bubble of self-contained reality located in southern an Arabian desert. Inaccessible to individuals that do not have prior knowledge of SCP-001's location. Traveling through the desert with only the intention of reaching SCP-001 is not sufficient. Express and exact knowledge of its geogra geographical position is required. Notably, individuals with some sort of artificial implant, ranging from surgical screws and plates to complex prosthetics, appear to have a higher chance of success in locating and entering the anomaly. The purpose and range of this is unclear, but personnel with implants successfully entered SCP-001 and 88% of tests, compared to standard personnel's 62%. SCP-001 contains an ancient metropolis partially buried in the sand. Maps and initial sonar testing indicate approximately two-thirds of the city are above ground and largely intact, while the subterranean portion has degraded heavily and is no longer structurally sound. The above-ground portion is made up of skyscrapers and buildings up to half a kilometer high using modern design techniques far beyond those available at the time of construction, which has been carbon dated to approximately 2400 BCE. The buildings are fully set and furnished and appear to have served residential, commercial, bureaucratic, and various other uses. The largest and most intricate of these buildings is a large temple structure in the center of the city that extends throughout all thirds. There are no living organisms inside the city. See section 001.4. The buildings also contain artistic works in large Archbeds leaves depicting a variety of scenes ranging from apparently religious stories to historical events. These contain, in writing in an unknown language, containing elements of older Arabic, see section 001.2. Most of these are concentrated in the temple at the heart of SCP 001. The subterranean floors are dominated by extensive, complex machinery. These range from antiquated clockwork systems to vacuum tubes to power generators extremely similar to modern nuclear reactors. However, all machinery is non-functional and appears to be in a state of advanced disrepair. It's starting to sound like a lot of the SCP-001 stuff might be related to the Church of the Broken God, which I think I've read before, might want to uh, redo that. In another video. Zero, zero, SCP 001 A is a collective designation for all automata found within the city, chief among which is SCP 001 A 1. 
See section 001.2. SCP 001A1 has identified the city as being the origin for the Oranic myth of Iram of the Pillars. See section 001.1. But it's clarified that its proper name is Amani Ram. Section 001.1 Historical Briefing The first mention of Iram in mundane literature is in the 89th chapter of the Quran, lines 6 through 14. They reference Iram, who had lofty pillars, the likes of whom had never been created in the land, as a cult subject to divine retribution by God for the, for the oppression of others. <sighs> 6. Have you not considered how your Lord dealt with Ad? 7. With Iram, who had lofty pillars, the likes of whom had never been created in the lands, and with Damid, who carved out the rocks in the valley, and with Pharaoh, owner of the pyramids, all of whom oppressed within the lands and increased their in, in the corruption. So your Lord poured on, upon them a scourge of punishment. Indeed, your Lord is, observa is an observation, as is quoted, apparently. Many theories have been offered on the identity or location of the group or city that identified as Iram, but nothing has ever been confirmed by the wider historical community. SCP-001 first came to Foundation attention in 1983 upon the containment of SCP-1867, which we'll have to read eventually. With the seizure, with a, with the seizure of a, a, assets in SCP-1867's private vault, a series of journals were reco re recovered detailing its experiences with the French army oriented during their campaign into the Middle East in 1801. One journal, all partially dictated an encounter with a vast, ruined city accessible only to those who knew its location. The moisture damage had left it largely unreadable. An interview was conducted. Oh, from Lord Blackwood. Oh, knowing Lord Blackwood. This is going to be really fun. Interviewer, Dr. Hedvig No. Osbaum, Parahistory Division, Special Consultant on Anomalous Cults and Cultures. Subject SCP 1867. Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood! Begin log. Evening, madam! Hello, Lord Blackwood. I must say, it's heartening to see someone of the a gentler sex in such an academic position. Worms, orbs, the cockles of my heart. Right. Well, we would like to talk to you about one of the items recovered from your vault. A journal titled Lord Blackwood in the First Cities of Man. Of course, of course, spent from 1800 to 1824. Does the journal not answer your questions? I recall being very thorough. Water damage has left it unreadable. I see. That's a shame. Well, it's been quite a while, but I remember that adventure fondly. Initiated by a gift given to me by one of Monsieur Jacques Brazel of Le Estate Noir. Agents of the French crown had recovered it before the revolution from an ancient strip wreck in the Aegean Sea. What was it? A set of six clay tablets, remarkably preserved for their age, detailing the existence of three empires spanning Asia, thousands of years old and more powerful and advanced than any culture since, even our own. And of course, a nigh-apocalyptic war. You would think something like that would leave evidence. Yes, I was similarly skeptical upon, read, upon my first reading of the tablets, but they addressed those inquiries. These empires were advanced occultists, magicians, and magic users, ruled by sorcerer, sorcerer nawabs. Hiding their cities from their enemies was a trivial task. 
and exactly why the mundane scholars have found nothing. But not you, I take it. Exactly correct, madam. I believe I have a copy of one of the pages from the journal stashed away somewhere. I'll see if we can't find that, but in simplest terms, the first of the three great cities of man was Amani Ram, located in the sands of Arabia. As luck would have it, Monsieur Azir was the company general of Oban of Heart, still a general at the time, thank heavens, on his campaign into Egypt. Civil matter for me and a small ex expedition to tag along and then diverge into the, into the peninsula. So you knew the location of the city at this point? In a fashion, you see. The tablets claim Amani Ram was hidden after the other empires allied to attack it. It was a superior center of knowledge and weaponry. Only those who knew its location could enter. And its location happened to be recorded in the tablets. Three days into the desert, we found it. It was like passing into a bubble, and the towers became invisible over the horizon. Towers, you said. Great building inks fashioned of metal, impossibly tall, easily hundreds of meters. A bronze glow set them alight from the sun overhead. I thought the British were still recording in feet in the 1800s. There must have been a dozen of these skyscraping buildings, between them resting smaller but still grand buildings of marble, stone, clay, towering minarets, and domes like those found in Muhammad and, 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 and temples. A grand sight altogether. The city must have been able to hold hundreds of thousands of people. We explored a tiny fraction of the surface ocean. There was a subterranean area, even bigger than the surface, I would say. Again, we could not explore deep the, the underground. And rapidly transitioned from grand hollows and caverns to a, wider, to a winding labyrinth and then a tunnel system with metal pipes and doors and rivers all throughout. With truly, I could not begin to guess the purpose of, of all still as depth. Did you find any entities inside the city? Not living ones. My men repeatedly claimed they heard something skittering about while we stayed in the city. I dismissed it as wildlife, sand rabbits or such. We never saw anything. What about dead ones? Yes, entire sections of the tunnel were impassable, growths of a strange black vine, as thick as a man, winding and knotting entire passageways. It appeared petrified. There were also curious bulbous sacks sticking through the walls and ceiling of many buildings, under and above ground. I fried these with my sword. They leaked, spewing out a decomposed specimen that smelled like death. An impossibly emaciated man. Skin burnt away by the acid. We did not touch him again. Sounds like something bad happened there. Indeed. Throughout the city has a very specific air, I suppose. An air? The distinct feeling of walking into a graveyard. End log. SCP-1867 is in the location of the Aegean Tablets. Translation is ongoing due to the extremely specific dialect of ancient Greek that it was written in. The accent page of the journal mentioned by Blackwood contains the translation and of the front of the first tablet. Mm. Attached, attached document from July 1983. In the beginning, there were three. A thousand years before, before man learned of Olympus, before the extinction of the giants, before the sea had full regressed, there were three. Three great cities surviving the world. 
tripartite. I really find it interesting that we still love that number so much. Even in SCP, we still use number three a lot. Sorry for interrupting. Momdrol and Karar, two dark forces resting in the jungles of the subcontinent. The magicians and sorcerers, the wa of allied themselves against the horrors of the jungle and crossed paths with something ancient. The covenant of the Deva was born, using the first magic gifted it to man, the magic of life and death. Aditum, a city thrown into rebellion by a charismatic slave turned earned a lay preacher who promised wealth, freedom, and power to those that would help him. Together they threw off their yokes, slaughtered their oppressors with their new sorcery, and rebuilt their collapsed city all under the name of the Grand Crisis Aeon. The Naka Empire freed the second magic, Cardomancy, the magic of flesh. Amani Iram, first great realm of the Mechanite Empire as it spread like a wildfire from the, from the deserts. A gleaming, shining metropolis rising out of the dunes, a center of knowledge, science, understanding the world has never seen. The magic of machines became known, the fervor for a new god that sought to uplift man, not subjugate them. A thousand years before, the three great nations of men fought a war that destroyed the world. The Yagan tablets, tablets go on to clarify that Amani Ram was ruled by a theocratic cult in the area. The endonym of the group is unknown, but the Greek tablets refer to it exclusively as a Mechanite cult or cult of the broken god. Which is another or name for the Church of the Broken God as we know it now, at least in the SCP canon. No other evidence for this group has been known has been discovered thus far. <sighs> Section zero zero one point two. Initial encounter. MTF of Sigma 3 met a Gellin men were dispatched to the coordinates provided by SCP 16, I mean 1867. I was wondering why I was reading that wrong. To investigate the location of SCP 001 and if possible gain entry to the city. Attached document August 1983. Begin log. Gallon one We're coming up to the coordinates now. Set it down nice and easy. We'll walk the last click it over. Roger that over. Magellan five drops altitude, lowering the helicopter to the ground. The rest of the Magellan team disembarks. Location is due north, sir! About a 4.7 click walk. Right, let's get going. Over the next 14 minutes, Magellan team closes is in on the coordinates of SCP-001. Closing in, sir! Over. Continue through. Keep if on radio contact. Got it. Over. Over the next several minutes, and it's all members of Magellan and fan out over the nearby area to try and locate SCP-001. They are unsuccessful. Command, we can't find anything out here. Our instruments aren't showing anything either. It looks like regular old... Old that's... Magellan? We're no longer reading Magellan and Forest Pyometrics. Please confirm. Magellan Forest is no longer present in the area. Magellan 4, Chris, do you copy? Safety, over radio. This is Magellan 4, over. The hell did you guys go? Where's still he here? Where did you go? But you... Hold on. Whew. 
<sighs> the gun for partially reappears. His upper half jets up from midair, as if he is leaning through a doorway. Oh, you found it. Well done. Command. Permission to enter. Permission granted. Apparently radio is still working there. Keep in contact. Over. Magellan team enters SCP-001. Biometrics are lost. Auto-visual contact is lost for 13 seconds. Satellite uplink re-established and a video feed from Magellan Force ocular implants begins coming through. The other three members of Magellan are visible, standing on a sand dune. Several hundred meters ahead of them, a massive glass and metal city shining in the east sunlight. Its skyscrapers are hundreds of meters tall, bordering broad avenues of sandstone. Oh, man. That is... Wow, that's beautiful. Please enter the city and begin initial exploration. Magellan continues into the streets of Amani Ram. The large earth skyscrapers are made of a bronze colored metal and polished glass, while the smaller buildings seem to be constructed from a blend of limestone, bricks, and concrete. All buildings exhibit an architectural style reminiscent of Islamic and Moroccan architecture. The streets appear to have designed sections for pedestrians and larger traffic. This place is thousands of, of years old. Why do they have streets with lanes? This, the rest is, of the place looks awfully advanced. Maybe they had early anomalous cars or something. I don't know. Exiting home. These are all for, only furnished too. It looks lived in. Like everyone up and left midway through dinner. You hear that? No, what is it? Nothing. Thought I heard a rat or something. Magellan continues through the city. The encounter a large stairways and set into the ground, leading to the, to the subterranean section. They return before descending more than a few meters. Blackwood was in line. Looks like there's a pretty substantial underground part to the city. Almost like a metro or something. It's dark. And it smells musty as hell down on there, though. I can't see a thing. One suggests sending, descending without the rats. Noted. Thank you. Magellan continues, arriving in a heavily deter deteriorated section of the city. The buildings look heavily damaged, with entire sections exploded and left to the elements. Oh crap, command? Before them lies a, a deep hole in the ground. At the bottom, a large pile of skeletons is visible. Pit trap? No, no, obvious method of death at, at the bottom, and the remains are too intact for them to have died on impact. It's a um, mass grave. Jesus, what happened here? What's that at the bottom? Looks like one of the vines Blackwood mentioned. How if I'm going down there? Though if he's right, there should be plenty around to grab samples from. After two hours of walking through the ruined and portion of the city, encountering many more graves, Magellan approaches the low, wide complex in the approximate center of SCP-001. It is only a few stories high, but a much more grand and decorated and wide as reliefs and illustrated facades with ceramic tiling. Fancy, between the location and grandeur, I think it's a palace or a temple. It does look very holy. Permission to enter? Permission granted. Magellan enters the compound. The interior is an open-air courtyard with a central 30-meter statue of a man sitting on a throne. The man's face is obscured by an intricate mask. His robes fall away to reveal a torso made of metal plating. Looks kingly, alright. I sure hope that's not life-sized. 
check out these walls. Command, they almost like, look, they look almost like, no, they're definitely telling a story. You should get someone smart enough to take a look at, at it. Roger, continue into the place for now. Oh, wow, that picture is really pretty. Magellan enters through the large doorway into the central, into a central court area. An oversized throne, inset with gears and swords, sits on a raised dais at the opposite end. The interior of the palace is vast. The following out where is spent exploring its various staterooms, kitchens, and bathrooms. The vast gardens are completely bare of greenery, as with the rest of the city. No living thing is present. Magellan returns to the throne room. This place gives me the creeps. It doesn't feel abandoned, but where is everyone? No idea. In any case, it's getting late. We should pack it in and... Galen 4 turns to the wall, raising a hand. As with the rest of the city, there are numerous pipes running across the walls. Four. Galen 4 is speaking to the wall. It's okay, you can come out, we won't hurt you. A metallic skittering is audible from inside the pipe. Gutters remembers of the Mag of Magellan draw their sidearms. Four, what are you talking? A gun for set trust is, is him. Okay, sure. A few seconds later, a metallic automaton, on resembling a horseshoe crab, gingerly peeks out of a hole in the pipe. It slowly approaches and climbs onto Four's outstretched arm. Command, you seen this? Roger. It doesn't seem to be dangerous, but don't shoot anything. But don't let your guard down. Head on back. Got it. Over. At least it's only... Oh, let's get... Ring becomes audible. I run thrown a large number of automatons, all varying... All small but varying in shape here out of the various pipes. Oh. The Megalian team ex exited Amani Ram and were not pursued by SCP-001 instances. On their way out, they noted in many SCP-001 instances milling about the city and traversing through the city's pipe system, indicating its purpose as transportation for the entities. The SCP-001-8 instances expressed no hostility towards the Magellan team, and several approached to investigate none followed past the borders of the city. I believe that's actually a really good place to stop for today. So far, Amani Ram is looking like a city that was abandoned a long time ago after some sort of great war that apparently destroyed the world. More information will clearly be gleamed if we continue on this series. That is kind of where you come in. Please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this. I am going to continue this tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!